All right, now back. Now, all I've done with the dough, I put it into this bowl, put a tea towel over it, and left it in a warm spot, basically like how you treat pizza dough or bread dough, just for it to relax. Now, you'll definitely feel a change in consistency of it, and you can see how it's not cracking, it's nice and pliable, and it's just got an overall kind of nice light yellow colour to it. So that's perfect, right? Well, not, maybe not perfect, but that's pretty good. <laughs> so that's half of the original dough from 400 grams and five eggs. So that I'm going to freeze. I'll put that in the freezer and I'll use that another day. Now I've already kind of done a little bit here. Now this is my pasta machine. Um, you can get these relatively easily in... Um, every city's got a certain area where there might be more uh, Italian and Greek shops and groceries and stuff like that. You can get them in a lot of places nowadays, but you'll find them in those types of places. If you haven't got one and you're going to make pasta, you can roll it out, that's fine. But I would definitely suggest you invest in one. You can pay from 20 bucks to 100 bucks for one. Uh, this is a fairly good one. Now, I would suggest it's like anything else, any other machinery or culinary stuff. You're better off paying a little bit more and getting something good. Uh, and it will last for ages rather than something cheap and then it just breaks and uh, okay so if you've got a pasta machine you haven't used it before you'll have a dial on the side where you can change the thickness of the pasta so initially we're going for a thick and then a uh, thick setting and then we're going to go thin make sure that it's clamped down so it's fairly secure onto your bench and you're ready to go, all right? Now, the easiest thing to do, now I've already done some, but this is a bit left over. All I do is just squash it down. So I've just got a thin end, feed it in, and it'll just come through, like so, all right? And then just keep, this is a lot easier with two people, but sometimes it's just you. So, all right. So that's starting to roll it now. From there, I'm going to bring in the diameter or the thinness of it a little bit. Alright, we'll go through again. Now this is obviously just making it flat, so you should be able. To, you'll get an attachment too, and I'll show. You, I'll, actually, I'll show you while I've got you on this one here. So, all of, all you do with this one here, now they differ, but mine just goes in on the side and you'll have different parts in there for different types of pasta. When you've got it kind of nice and thin like that, well, it helps if I take the crank out. Now all I'm going to do from there and there you go. You've got pasta. Now all I would all I do with this is just leave it out like that, just to kind of firm up a little bit. But if you're gonna use it straight away, you don't have to worry about it too much. But if you're gonna leave it and dry it out, then keep it separate or else you'll just get a big mess. Alright? Alright, now that's that. So I'm not making spaghetti or anything else, so we'll move all this out of the way. Now this is a sheet I'd already prepared before, alright, oh, of course that was going to be in the way, so all I've done, I've just cut off the ends, make sure it's nice and even. Now from here I'm making ravioli, so I can either make big ravioli, put down, fold it over and then cut it up like that if I wanted to or I can fold it over this way so what I might do is actually do it a crossways so I'll grab a um, maybe I won't I'll grab a teaspoon now the other thing too just have a bit of an egg wash so just an egg and a filling, whatever filling. Now my filling is uh, sweet potato or yam, depending on where you live, and uh, cashew nuts. So all I'm doing is just getting a teaspoon. Actually, I put it on this side, just like so. All right. Come 
across, just like so. Now obviously when you're making your pasta too, you can do different things with it. So you don't you can just make plain pasta if you want, or you can add herbs to it as well. Dry herbs, I don't, I'm not a big fan of dry herbs, but there are some that do dry well. So you can't use or you can, but I wouldn't use fresh herbs if I was putting it into flour for pasta, but dry herbs are good for something like that. So there's always a, an exception. All right, so we're nearly there. Now you can see I'm just keeping them to one side. Now I'm just leaving a gap on the other side because I've got to be able to seal it. And I think I'm pretty gonna be pretty lucky. Might just steal a little bit from a couple of other ones. And that one's a bit big, isn't it? Greedy guts. Alright. Okay, so we're ready to rock. Now, I haven't got a brush, unfortunately. I thought I had one. But I think I've left it somewhere. So that's a bit of a pain. The easiest thing to do is to use an egg brush and just brush along. But I'm going to do it the hobo way and just use my fingers. So all along the edge like that. Alright. Make sure you get the ends like that. And then just in between because that's where we're going to be cutting it. You can see where a brush would be a lot easier. So make sure your hands are clean. And try and keep them a good distance apart. And I'll explain why in a second. Alright, so that's all done. Now from here, all we're going to do is just come in and fold it over. Fold it over. Fold it over. So fold it like so. Now what I want to do now is just to make sure that there's no air pockets in there. If you have a big air pocket in it, when it, the ravioli is cooking, it'll pop. So it's just a matter of fluffing around a little bit with each one. You can just give it a pinch. Now I've kind of rushed it a little bit. These aren't the most even ones because I wanted to make sure I had enough time on the video to actually do it. Alright, so that's not too bad. They look pretty good. Now all I'm going to do from there, it can be a bit easier once they've individualised to get rid of the air pockets on them. And that's a pretty scrappy pasta ravioli. Make sure it's nice and sealed. Now they look pretty rough and ready but they will taste nice. Another thing you can do too, if you don't want that kind of just cut look, is use a um, cutter, like a cookie cutter, or a roller that's got a little curved blade on it too. And take your time a little bit more than me. I brushed it because I wanted to kind of get it done for the video. So that's it. It's my ravioli. Easy. And of course, like I said, you can freeze it and do what you want with the dough. I'm going to freeze the rest of that dough and we'll see how we go. All right. Thanks for watching. Any questions, give me a yell. Um, you can have a look on the website too, www.theproducegarden.com. And this pasta dough and a few um, pasta recipes and plus a plethora of other things are in my book that's now available from the website too. So have a look and see what you think. All right, cool. Thanks again. I'll see you soon. Bye.